What's up you guys, today I'm doing a quick gear review on one of the dopest little gimbal camera combos that is available right now, and that is the Zhiyun, or Zhiyun, because that's how you say it apparently, and I can't unlearn that. The Zhiyun Crane M2 and the Sony RX100 Mark VII. I went all over LA to get footage to put this thing to the test. Here's the highlights. The lightest, cheapest, best quality, most bang for your buck setup that you can even get right now. I mean, this whole thing costs about 1600 bucks. The gimbal's only 269 for super stable 4K footage. I know, you're saying my phone shoots 4K, I could just get a phone gimbal, but what are you gonna do when your phone is set up for a 30 minute time lapse? Read a book? Ugh. This is the setup I've been using the most often lately. I use it to get some interviews for my last video because it's just so light and inconspicuous. I also use it to get these shots in my last Tesla accessories video, which you can find if you click somewhere up here. I'm gonna give you a quick overview, show you how to connect the camera to the gimbal to the phone, go over a few tips and tricks I've learned and show you where this thing falls short and how it stacks up against my much bigger, much more expensive setup, the Ronin S and the Sony a7 III. Just look how big this thing is. Like I'm in its shadow. This one barely even has a shadow. I get it. It can fly a bigger, nicer camera, but like it's so heavy. I like never want to take it out. And if you do, you want to set it down every once in a while and just rest? Am I holding anything? No idea. Look at the boxes. This is not going in a backpack. I was riding home from work yesterday and Formula One was on Hollywood Boulevard and I happened to have this little contraption in my shoulder bag and I got this. Yeah, I could have gotten even crazier footage if I used the Ronin and the a7 III, but it doesn't fit in my bag. Gimbals like this are gonna be dinosaurs as they keep packing amazing features into tiny little cameras like the Sony RX100 Mark VII. You're not gonna put this little camera Moving on. You can actually also use a GoPro or a phone with this gimbal. I was actually kind of scared to put a GoPro on here that already has steady shot because I didn't want to break the space time continuum. But once I thought of it, I had to know. So here's footage of me running full speed down my street with a Hero 7 on here. So let's go over the features real quick. It's got a pan follow mode, which uh, is what happens when you first turn it on, it goes into pan follow mode. And that's basically where uh, it will pan, but it won't, it won't tilt. You can actually do a cool kind of like jib or crane shot following somebody's feet all the way up to, you know, their head and shoulders and whatnot. If you press the trigger one time, it goes into full follow mode and it will, it will pan and tilt with you. If you hit mode button once, it will go to lock mode. Any way that you turn this thing, um, it's staying in the same direction. It's always looking at the same thing. Lock mode is really cool because you can put it down and just point it to wherever you wanna shoot and it just stays there. So it's like having a little mini tripod that's like super easy to control and point in any direction. That's cool. I didn't know about lock mode before this gimbal and I love it and I'm using it all the time. Hit it one more time, we go into POV mode. POV mode is really trippy and cool because it actually tilts and so you can go all the way upside down and get all sorts of really trippy, really artistic, crazy shots.
if you double click on mode, it goes into go mode and go mode is like super responsive. So wherever you point it, it's going to look there very fast. It's basically full follow mode, but it's got very quick reaction time. When you're in go mode, tap mode twice again, and it goes into what's called vortex mode. It should be called vertigo mode though, because it is super trippy. I did a review last year of four phone gimbals. Uh, you can find that if you click up here. And none of the gimbals for the phone, last year anyway, had the vortex mode, which I thought was so cool to get in the Ronin because if you wanna stand out and do a shot that sets you apart from what everyone can do, it's nice to have a piece of equipment that can make that happen. And it's super cool to have that kind of functionality in a gimbal that costs $269. Those are all the modes. One thing that's dope, if it kind of gets out of whack, you can just tap twice on the trigger and it goes straight back into its first position. And you've got a vlogging camera sitting right on top of this thing. They thought about that. And if you push the trigger three times, let me see if I can do that. Uh, bingo bango, you're in selfie mode, which is very cool. So you could be walking around with this thing popped up. You don't even have to rebalance it and be walking and talking. Something happens and you're like, boom, boom, boom. Hey, now I'm capturing all that. Bing, bing, bing. And you're back. They've got this lock feature, which basically they've got this little pin in here that locks into place. You lock this down and you set this lock and then bam, this thing does not move. This locking mode is awesome when you're done shooting and you just wanna lock the thing up so that it doesn't swing around while you're walking with it. When you have your rig all balanced, you can set this little lock pin when you wanna put it back into place, it just snaps right into the place you had it at and it's basically balanced. You turn that thing on, you're balanced, you're ready to go. All right, to get the most out of this thing, you gotta connect the camera to the gimbal. To do that, you gotta download the Z Play app. When you go into the app, there's a section for connecting to the M2 gimbal. It will find your gimbal, just press connect, choose camera or smartphone, boom, and I'm in. But if you wanna control the camera with the gimbal, you gotta press on this little Wi-Fi situation and you go into your camera settings, you go to control with smartphone connection, it will bring up a little barcode, and then you use your phone and you scan the barcode. Now, if you don't wanna have to do that every time, cause that's kind of a pain in the ass, right? Yeah, it is. What you need to do is go into your control with smartphone setting. On the first menu, it says control with smartphone connection or always connected. Set always connected to on. That way you could just turn this on, turn this on, they're connected. Now you can press record and do the zoom functionality without needing to go through your app every time. One thing that's great about having a gimbal is the ability to do motion time lapses. Pan and tilt time lapses, they're dope. And you can do them with these, so it's great. So let me tell you now where this thing falls short. It actually doesn't control the shutter for taking photos. It will start the shutter for like recording a video, but it will not take a picture. This gimbal does have all that functionality with older RX 100 models. I contacted June and they did say that a software update is on its way, uh, but they wouldn't give me a timetable for when that would be coming out. So as of now, if you wanna do motion time lapses, you have to do a little bit of a workaround. So this is how you do that. Go set up your whole time lapse specifications in camera. Then you go into the app and you go to the section for motion time lapse. Set your time-lapse mode to video mode because photo mode will have a jerky motion from point to point where it's meant to take the pictures. That might not correspond exactly with the pictures that are being taken on your camera because remember, they're not talking to each other. And you basically just press them to go at the exact same time. So you can do it. It's just not as easy as if you were able to set everything up in the app and the app were able to control your camera and take all the pictures. That'd be great, but apparently that functionality is still on its way. 
Tracking worked relatively well. Uh, I just walked around my house and it seemed to understand where I was. One thing that I found to be super handy that I'm glad they put in there was this little mounting screw and I was able to put my Rode Wireless Go microphone on it and that's what I used when I went out and did those interviews on the street. I think it'd be great to have a camera like this and a gimbal like this where you can draw on the screen for tracking and set all your waypoints for motion time lapse and just do everything because they're made to function together. I think this June M2 Crane is as close as we've gotten so far to something this light that works with something this professional in the RX100 Mark 7 that together this is the best, most versatile, highest quality thing we have on the market right now. I do have links for these in the description. They're my Amazon affiliate links, so if you click them, it does help me out. Uh, I also do have a discount code for the M2, so uh, check that out in the description. If you're still here, you liked it, so don't be shy. Hit that like button or uh, maybe subscribe or watch a few of the other videos. I do videos on tech and futurism, filmmaking, stand-up comedy, biohacking, all sorts of stuff. So check those out and thanks for watching. Peace.